What's up guys, Ivan here with GetIvan.com and in this video we're going to be talking about how to set up a desktop Ubuntu uh, Linux server using uh, in particular Vulture cloud computing services. So I'm not really going to get into use case that much. I just really kind of want to show you guys how I figured out how to do this and then use case could be saved for another video or really whatever you've got in mind. But one of the benefits is that this is like the cheapest way to set up a desktop environment in the cloud um, without incurring a lot of cost. Right, well, cheapest way without a lot of cost, kind of said the same thing twice. But yeah, this is the cheapest thing I've been able to find so far. Um, excuse me. When I first started it, I, I did look at the OVH a little bit. And I, I try to plan there, but then it turns out that everything that's provisioned from OVH is uh, just SSH access oriented. You know, you, there's no desktop option there. And, and so I canceled that and long story, very short. <laughs> and I went over to GCP here, uh, Google Cloud Platform. And I made several instances here. You can see like there's like 10 <laughs> tasks that I, I I rolled through yesterday. Pardon me. Before I decided to just kind of delete everything. One of the issues over here was that there are some guides for getting going with a, a VM on GCP. The problem is that they all say kind of different things. And I was hitting walls at making it work at different play in different places. Pardon me. Um, this still could be the cheapest thing if you were to use an ISO, like in an image, um, and then maybe activate spot instance or a, a preemptible VPS or whatever to reduce costs like that could actually be maybe even cheaper than what I'm going to show you guys with Vulture, but, um, that might have to be saved for another test another time. Like as it is out of the box, I couldn't find a solution that was um, both cost effective and worked up in an expected manner uh, with GCP. So I deleted everything in GCP and that brings us to Vulture. So the cool thing about Vulture is for one, I was able to get some support from their service to, to give me some answers in terms of how this could be accomplished. Let me take a look. Uh, it's a little confusing the differences between some of these things and, and they're not properly articulated when you're looking at the back end. The, the documentation really could be better in terms of, you know, what, what's, what kind of, uh, what sets these, these things apart. And so that, that would be, something to get into more detail about and and there's not as many points points of presence with vulture they're they're a, a smaller provider kind of like digital ocean so there's certainly some pros and cons between different cloud providers but the most important thing in this use case for me at the time was just to find something that was going to be easily deployable and cost effective so that was one of the reasons i looked at looked at vulture for those of you who might be into other types of hosting, you may recall in the past, I've talked about, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I've talked about um, Cloudways. And Cloudways, actually, some of their best plans, give me a second here. Some of the best plans for Cloudways uh, are backed by Vulture as the cloud provider. So Vulture's come a ways. It's not on demand like with GCP, you can turn off the server at any moment. And some things that you provision are, you're constantly paying for those things like the static IP but or the, the, the hard drive. But with, with GCP, it's really cool because you basically just pay for exactly what you use when it comes to computational resources. So Vulture is not like that. They're sort of like semi-cloud on demand where you can you can provision uh, 
a set quantity of resources and like whatever you create, that's what you pay for, even if the server's turned off. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's as elastic as on-demand cloud, but the in terms of being able to set up infrastructure, but it's not as um the 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 pricing doesn't work the same way like it's it's more static you know what i mean so it that's kind of where it's a little bit different like when you look at, at gcp if you were if you were to pay for it 24 7 it's a, it's more expensive but the difference is that if you're using things sporadically you actually will end up paying less with gcp even at just like regular prices. And then on top of that, there are other things you can do to drop costs. So it's it's not all cut and dry. And any of you guys out there who do stuff with servers know that there's there are all kinds of things to take into consideration when it comes to provisioning resources in any given service. So it's it's a mess out there. But so this is just one method of many approaches to how to do this. But the reason I wanted to show you guys this is because it's so easy. But so when you click, when you sign up for the account, and by the way, I'm going, I am going to include, you can see they have a referral program here. And I think uh, they have a thing right now where if you use the link that I give you guys, after you put $35 into your account, they will give you like $100 for free. So it's a pretty sweet deal. Uh, and then they'll give me a little bit of cash for that too. So I'm going to put this, that link below this video. So it, it appreciate if you use that. If not, it's it's whatever you want to do. Um, but they do give free credit. So anybody who wants to test this and they stay in your account. So you want to test this stuff out, use this every once in a while, see if Vulture works. It's really useful. Um, so anyways, when you're ready to go under instances here, you can click on click to deploy a new server. And you know, I'll be honest, it's a little confusing what the difference is between these features here. Uh, and actually, that's where the, the front end kind of helps because you can see here compute instances with Intel CPUs and 100% SSD storage. Okay, so that tells me that tells me a little bit of something. Let's see here. Let's see. All clouds are not created equal. Points of presence. So I would I would make sure to look at some of this information to try to make sure you know what you're getting into fully automated dedicated servers with zero virtualization layer. These are dedicated cloud compute instances, no noisy neighbors. That's that's nice. Managed Kubernetes. Yeah, da, da, da. So this what this kind of says is okay. You're getting certain great features, but this sounds like shared. Uh, which could be one of the reasons why I was running into some latency issues in the server that I tested to do this method. Um, I'm not clear on the difference between bare metal and dedicated in this case. And, and you guys know <laughs> between services, sometimes they'll say, you know, dedicated or private, and you kind of really got to read the D be involved in the details. So, and you can see here, high frequency, you know, uh, I would I would just kind of look at the prices and just determine which one is good. I, I used cloud compute for Dallas. And when you look at the price uh, under Ubuntu, it's 10 bucks a month for 55 gigabyte SSD, one CPU, two gigs of memory, two gigs of bandwidth. You know, I looked at Vulture years ago for uh, hosting scrape box type servers, and it just it, it is just it just wouldn't it didn't work at the time because pardon me, the bandwidth limits were really low at that time. This actually would work today, I think, but um, there were certain issues. So I would look at some of that high frequency. You can see it's a little bit more expensive. And I kind of thought, well, maybe that's because in this model, you're getting more hard drive space. But it's, it's still not clear to me, like, what does it mean when this is high frequency, this is cloud compute? So I, I would do some searches on that. Let's look at bare metal. They don't have one in Dallas. So oh, Chicago would be the one that I would go with. And you see, it's this is really expensive. You don't, 
you can't get smaller packages with that. Dedicated cloud's probably going to be big also. Yeah, too much. To see two two CPU and 8 gigs of RAM, that's 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 way too much for those specs. They give you all this hard drive space like and that's that's kind of one of the issues of the Vulture. They they don't have as customizable uh, the options are not very customizable, which makes it hard to be it, it, that's one of the reasons why it's it's kind of like semi-scalable cloud infrastructure. It's not like totally, they're advertising themselves as a cloud provider, but it's not really the same as GCP, Azure, Oz, probably Digital Ocean also, but um, excuse me. So anyways, I just went with this feature here for Dallas, and then you're not actually going to go with a profile here. I was just kind of showing you this to give you an idea about uh, costs. So with this model, it's pretty cheap. I mean, that's 10 bucks a month, 24 seven use. Uh, the issue of course, is that even on Linux, what I found in the server that I was able to get going in a desktop environment, it, you could use it, but there was just a, l a little bit of chop. So if you do it at this package, pardon me, uh, just be aware that whatever you're using it for, like if you're going to do slow macros um, or whatever, slow level scripting, just be aware there's a there's going to be a little bit of chop in there. Um, but that's kind of the idea here. You know, you could you could really cut costs, keep it at a minimal infrastructure and um, and and have this this system for automatable processes going in the background, but, um, or maybe as an environment for say a VA to use for various tasks. Um, now this, this, I think this would be maybe too slow for a VA. So I kind of went up to this package here. This, this would be a more performant package. It, it would be nice if you could drop the SSD capacity and then you could drop the price. But anyway, so in this example, I would kind of go with this infrastructure, but um, what you want to do, and this is the method here, is you want to upload your own ISO. And this is what the uh, the support team turned me on to. Let me show you this email they sent me. So in this ticket, I basically just said, you know, hey, do you guys have anything that is just ready to go out of the box? Because I tried some of their configurations, but they're not desktop ready. They're just server side, you know, communicate with SSH or whatever uh, script for scripting or however, you know, it, there's no desktop environment. And so he, uh, because they're even their documentation is conflicting instructions for being able to do your own setup like that. Um, and so he was just saying that if you pull the ISO from Ubuntu's website, you can see it says desktop right there. You can upload the ISO into Vulture and then just install it on their infrastructure. And it's the the, the ISO that Ubuntu provide or yeah, that they provide is desktop ready. And so that's basically what I did and it worked just fine. So let's go through those those steps right now so I can show you exactly what this looks like. So first, um, let me see over here this is the procedure page that he gave me and it's really simple you just grab the iso and then uh, upload it into your account over here on vulture so under products you can open up another tab and go to isos and then click on that plus button to add an ISO. And then it asks you for a remote URL and it tells you the requirements. Basically it just needs to end in dot ISO. So if you go to Ubuntu's website to download, you can look at this, this link here and you see in the lower left-hand corner there, it says, you know, 20 point, whatever desktop. So you want it to, I guess you want it to say desktop in the file name and that's the LTS, the, uh, the long-term uh, file the secure, the stable uh, uh, version of Ubuntu. So you can just right click, copy a link address here, and then come over here to upload the ISO, paste it in, and that's that's it. Um, 
Let me make sure we go back here. Uh, it, it takes, you know, some minutes or whatever, but it uploads into the, uh, the object storage. This is basically object storage for ISOs. And, um, and then when you go to install your whatever on the infrastructure, basically just select your infrastructure level here. And then uh, you can select the ISO that you've uploaded into the account. And then let me make sure it's all, yeah. And just out of curiosity, I kind of want to select this high frequency to see what the difference is here, because this is a little cheaper, isn't it? This is two and two. Oh, like that's two CPU. Let me see. Cloud CPU. This one's two and four. This one's one and two. Oh, okay. Oh, so maybe this would help. If I went over here, it's a little bit cheaper. I'm just curious. I'd like to try that. Let's see. Two and two. Let's try this. This might be better. So this will be good for me to test also. I don't need any of this stuff. Uh, I'm just going to call this host name Ubuntu 4. Uh, Ubuntu VA4. or whatever. Let's try, let's do dash four. Yeah. And that should be it. There should be able to just select that ISO and then deploy. And you can see they charge. It charges uh, per hour or whatever. It's pretty cheap. Actually, it should be more than that by now, but anywho, uh, that's probably for the day, but um, so it'll, it'll take a minute to install. And once it does, basically, you can log into the server and say, oh, wow, that's fast and configure the OS. So I'll just come in here and go to uh, view console. And this will pull up this. Let's see. Boot failed, not a bootable disk, no bootable device. Could not read. Just probably give it a second. It might take a second just to, to load up the the disk. But that's that's basically what the ISO is. It's like putting the install disk into the server, you know, into the computer. And then we'll, it'll basically take us through prompts to install Ubuntu. And, but it only takes a few minutes. Just give it uh, There it is. So now it's checking disks. And we're going to go through these prompts here together. So let's skip ahead to when this is ready to go. Well... I'll just explain that once we go through these prompts, basically there's a there's a guide here where I found uh, from this this site article is called how to set up remote desktop for Ubuntu from makeuseof.com. So they've got a quick little little section uh, at the bottom here to install XRDP. And so basically, once we're, we've configured the core operating system, we'll just run this command from the shell, from command prompt inside of Ubuntu. And then that'll install remote desktop. And then, and then once, this, once that happens, we can just enable it with this command and you're ready to go. You can access an Ubuntu desktop server from your uh, Windows uh, remote desktop connection. So pretty awesome little method let's open up uh this vnc thing here the this this um shell access thing is definitely not as good as um other shell utilities because you can't copy paste into here so 
it's kind of annoying. Like if you wanted to access shell for your server in some other way, then you could do that. But in this case, we're just going to move forward and proceed with the installation. Let's do a minimal install. I'm going to keep it as light as possible. Download updates while installing Ubuntu. That's fine. Continue. Erase and install. Okay, install. Continue. This, I had a hard time with this yesterday. It, it wouldn't let me choose, choose Dallas, Texas. So we'll just move forward. I'm just gonna call this Ubuntu VA4. And I don't want all this guff here. I just want this to be exactly what it's supposed to be pick a username okay that's fine choose a password so for the password i'm just going to generate i'm going to delete this server so i'm just going to do some numbers here okay our password to log in and continue. So this won't take long. Let's skip ahead to this when this is finished, however. So once you get to this part where it says the installation is finished, it'll it ask you to um, let's see installation is complete. You need to restart the computer in order to use it. The, the new installation, but I think that it's going to prompt us to remove the ISO. Yeah. Please remove the installation medium, then press enter. So what we need to do is we need to come over here to the server, open that up, go into some such place. Let's see settings. Yeah. Then under custom ISO, we need to remove the ISO. Yeah. And so that's kind of like, you know, removing the disk from the computer so that it doesn't pull it up when you when you reboot. So now that that's removed, we can go back to the server and go uh, into Well, I guess it it must have rebooted automatically. So we'll give it a second and uh, close this and uh, open that back up by going to view console. And it should be, yep, it's good to go. So now we have a desktop here and we'll just click on our user and type in our password. And by the way, if you can't figure out how to copy paste your password, what you have to do is click this little arrow and you have to go clipboard and then you put that in there and click paste. It's it's a huge pain. It's just this this interface they use. They don't let you copy paste. It's it's really weird. So just keep that in mind uh, if you need to copy paste a complex password. So it's a, in this case, I just typed it in. So I'm gonna hit enter there, and it'll log us in. So it might be that dual core here is because you know with that other plan we could have gotten. Was it two 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 CPU and four RAM for twenty bucks? And this one was two CPU and two RAM for eighteen bucks. So you're saving two bucks. Probably better to get the other package just to get the RAM. But because uh, I'm not sure the difference in those two packages, they really need to put documentation. Pardon me. Anywho, so let's go ahead and skip all this stuff. Let's see. Let's. Skip that. Don't send system info because you were running on bare minimum resources here. 
Um, all right, ready to go. Let's click done. And let's change the resolution here just to make things look good. So I'm going to click up here, go to settings. Let's go to displays. Change that right now. You could lower the resolution if you really wanted it to, I guess. Maybe that could help it perform better. I'm going to increase it, though, uh, just because I want it to be a better user experience. And then you shouldn't really need to mess with a ton of other things. Let's see. Don't want any blank screen. Turn that off. Sharing sound, privacy, applications. Let's put this here. Now under sharing, you might want to turn this on. Let's see, media sharing. No. Just gonna turn that on. There are some tutorials that said you wanted to turn that on for RDP stuff, but I think it might've been in relation to some other app. So, cause when I ran this stuff from shell, it, it didn't give me any problems. Let's run this software update. Let's see here. Yeah. It said it was supposed to install everything, but let's, let's just do this now. And then we'll do the, uh, We'll do the uh, the shell thing after this gets finished. All right. Okay, so to do the shell thing, you can just come up to activities here and then or click this hash. So it, one of these two areas, just go into the menu and you can go, you can click on terminal here, here. And then you basically just need to paste those commands, which would be here. Pseudo apt install XRDP. And so I'm just going to come in here, then use our little clipboard utility and paste that in like this. And then you want to make sure to click off and hit enter. You got to enter your password. And if it doesn't show up, don't freak out. It it they don't they don't show it. Allow it to show when you're putting in a password. It's just invisible. So just put in the characters or paste it, and then just hit enter. It's invisible. And then you want to hit Y for yes. I want to install this thing, and it'll go through its thing to install. And once you get this 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 uh, pending line like that again, then it's finished. So then we're going to go back and grab our other command to uh, command to enable the remote desktop connection thingy, and do the exact same thing. Paste in the clipboard. Oops. Oh, uh, uh, so entered some stuff in there. That was interesting. Uh, so then let's paste. Oh, I did not see anything. Let's try that again. Paste. There it goes. And then you click off and enter. Script. It's all executing. Okay, well, hopefully that worked. <laughs> and we can just exit here. And then turn that off. Now I'm assuming it should work now. I'm gonna go ahead and close this uh, shell viewing thing, come back over to this, and I'm gonna go ahead and restart the server. Server restart, boom, 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 restart server. I guess I could have done that in uh, the operating system. Oh well, it's fine. We'll just give it a hard restart anyways. And Give it a couple seconds. Let's see here. Don't need anything here. 
and I'll put I'll put the links to some of these things in the or these commands in the description. Uh, I, I'll put I'll put some of this stuff in like a paste bin or something below this video, and that way you guys can see uh, uh, some of these links. You can copy some of these links um, and some of these commands. I'll put some of these commands um, in there too. Okay, so let's uh, in order to access the server, what we need to do is copy this IP address, come over to Windows Remote Desktop Connection Utility. I'm going to right click and then click on Remote Desktop Connection. Drop this down. I'm going to paste the IP and then I have to type in the username. So in my case, it was Ubuntu VA-4. Allow me to save credentials. Then I'm going to click Connect. And if, if it pulls up this enter your password thing, that means it, it, it's successfully connected. If it just pens and pens and pens, I mean, something went wrong and you your, your utility can't see the server. So if that happens and you followed everything that I just did on screen, then I don't know what to tell you. Like you did something wrong along the way. Um, but as you can see, it should work, you know, uh, if you did the things that I did. Uh, and, and once you get here you put in put in your password i keep having to click numlock if your your password well anyways uh remember me and okay and then hopefully it renders and there you go so now we've successfully connected to the linux server the remote desktop through the RDC utility, which means that we get clipboard also, which is really nice. And you can see that it's a little different. Like we don't see the desktop shortcuts. We don't see the hash like this. There's no sidebar. You have to click activities and then it pulls out like a, it'll pull out that sidebar here and, and uh, you can see applications like this, but you see how it's, it's rendering really slowly. Like this is actually better better than the other server I have set up right now, but it's still like kind of painfully, there's a little bit of chop there. So probably would want to go in and, um, and do another one, not with high frequency. What was it? Was it this one? Yeah, it was this one. Probably, probably would not want to do it like that. You'd probably want to see two and two, two and two. Probably want to do cloud compute Dallas two and four. Maybe, maybe the RAM would help with the performance issues. So, but that, that's pretty much it. I mean, again, there's a lot to say in, in terms of, of use case, but with a server like this, you can run programs, you can run scripts, you can, uh, you can run activities where you would require a web browser, you know, um, you can have VAs work on the server so that you don't have to provide where the where the browser tabs are preloaded so that you don't have to like, you know, provide passwords. And, and that's kind of one of the things I was looking at recently. But, but um, anyways, I think that pretty much covers it. Appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And um, again, take a look at the links below the video. And if you have any questions or any requests or you know, any, uh, any ideas for how to use this kind of utility, just uh, leave a comment and I will catch you later. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.